know, we've gone a long way from how Spider-Man games have become. We've got some really old games that are considered classics now. Everybody loves these games, except some of them calling bad, but I still think they're good. You've got some old games that look crappy, but are still loved by many, including myself. Then you've got games like this that look great, but still have some haters. Then you've got amazing games that really, truly show you what it is to play a good Spider-Man game. But then, of course, there's Marvel Spider-Man, which is known as the best Spider-Man game ever. But, there's one Spider-Man game that gets a lot of hate, and I don't understand why. I'm talking about the amazing Spider-Man 2 video game. Now, before you start hating on this video instantly and disliking it, hear my point on what I think about this game. Now, we can all agree that the Amazing Spider-Man 2 movie sucks. It's just awful. Bad, in general. But, the video game, on the other hand, I feel like was pretty good. I consider it one of my favorite Spider-Man games. But everyone shits on this game, calling it terrible. I never understood why. People were just saying the game was bad in general, but just to be clear, let's show you what everybody thinks about this game. Don't confuse Spider-Man 2 with The Amazing Spider-Man 2. One is arguably the greatest Spider-Man game ever created, the other is arguably the worst Spider-Man game ever created. You see the difference? It's clear that this game was rushed to coincide with the movie, because it encapsulates everything that makes a poor Spider-Man video game. The controls and camera were horrific and insanely frustrating. The story was uninspired, the graphics were poor, the combat was boring, and the AI stupid, providing little challenge. And worst of all, the game was littered with game-breaking and immersion-shattering bugs. It was a total mess that reeked of tie-in cash grab. Those are fucking lies and you all know it believe me the game is not that bad now one i feel like the people who played this game were kind of overthinking it about this and i still don't get why everyone treated it like this game was garbage like everybody said it was but i feel like the game did decent let's make a clear start about this game let's start the story Now, the story of this game is actually pretty simple. It starts out with Peter trying to find Uncle Ben's killer. You know, that's something I thought he would do in the first game. But otherwise, he tracks someone down, like Shocker, before he has his gear. Attacks him with an AK-47. And it kind of does this kind of L.A. noir thing with asking what questions you want to do first. Which is really unique about the game. Plus, one thing off the bat is the web sling to this game, I actually thought was pretty cool how you got to press, well, if you're playing on, like, a PlayStation, it'd be, like, you press L2 to swing with the left hand, and then it's R2 with the right hand. No Spider-Man game has done that, and I'm surprised nobody has admired or even pointed that out. But still, the game, it did a pretty good job for a main story. I mean, there's a lot of good things in this game. Like, one thing, let's start on with the some of the side missions that are in this game. Again, the side missions in this game, I'd say, are unique. Everything in this game was pretty unique. I mean, this first side mission, or at least one of the first ones you'll probably encounter, is defusing or finding a bomb in the middle of the city. And what you need to do to get rid of it, you have to head straight to the ocean and basically dispose of it, throw it in the river. But one thing that people complain about with these side missions is that someone pointed out how the AI of the crowd glitches. First off, my point is, who fucking cares? I mean, you're not even supposed to be paying attention to the people in the first place. They're swinging in the air. Like, why would you be paying attention to the crowd anyway? But still, these side missions, I say, are pretty decent, and the graphics look pretty good. And one interesting thing the game does is that there's a whole breaking news thing every time you do a side mission. Basically, it's Whitney Chain who does it if you do good, but if you do bad, you hear J. Joe Jameson crapping on you about the dumb things you did if you didn't do the side mission correctly. 
and there's the heroic meter level, and then there's the menace meter level. Technically, if you're going to ignore the side missions, basically that can affect how the game treats you, and people around you when you swing around will treat you badly that way. But still, the game itself, it did pretty interesting things with side missions, also such as... Chasing criminals from driving away from the police. Now we all know that this is actually in Marvel Spider-Man PS4 as well, but I feel like this chase scene in the Amazing Spider-Man 2 video game is what inspired it, so you should give credit to this game for coming up with that idea. I mean, comparing the two, obviously Marvel Spider-Man did a better job, but still, the version they put up here is actually pretty decent for the most part. I mean, they were pretty creative with slamming right on top of the car like that, like blinding the driver with your webs, or at the same time you can just pull one of the guys out of the car like that, like they're a fucking ragdoll, like just bomb voyage like that. And at the same time, saving hostages in the game isn't easy either, and that's one thing that Marvel Spider-Man didn't do, putting hostages in the car so that way you couldn't just ram the car and trash it like how you do in Marvel Spider-Man. So here, they are, are pretty creative, and also you have a time limit of how long it takes you to get out of the car, or just get that person out of the car, and it would make sense. I mean, for once, the time limit actually has some good meaning. And the way he stops the car is actually pretty funny as well. Instead of just leaving it to sit there, he literally webs it up like that, making it look like, yeah, Spider-Man was just here. So this little side mission right here I think is pretty cool and I really like how this side mission is basically what inspired it from what it looked like in Spider-Man PS4. So give credit to this. Moving on to the next side mission which feels like literally another inspiration from Spider-Man PS4. The whole thing with the game hideouts, kind of like the Fisk hideouts or the demons. In this game there is a legit inspiration that you take out criminals so you can get them behind bars. Like legit, Spider-Man PS4 took notes on a lot of things that were in this game. The fact is, they were pretty much decently done in this game, but you look at my Marvel Spider-Man, they did a better job with it, but still, I feel like this game did a really good job with how it looked, and plus, the fighting in the game did not look boring or poor, and the AI was definitely not stupid. I mean, what the hell was Watchmojo talking about? I mean, it is a little bit challenging at some points, and plus, you need to check what the difficulty is if you do want to get a challenge. I mean, there's difficulties in games for reasons, you know. And plus, I love how the spider sense in this game is kind of like Batman's detective vision in the Arkham games, if you didn't just see that. That way you're able to look through walls. And that's one thing I wish Marvel Spider-Man had. Maybe in the sequel they can add that new spider sense where it's kind of like detective vision. I mean, I really like that idea, and the fact how they didn't do that in Marvel Spider-Man is kind of saddening to me, but still, this kind of spider sensibility I think is really cool, and I'm, I don't understand why they didn't put it in Marvel Spider-Man, but the fact how it's here, that makes the game pretty cool. And the combat in the game does look pretty good if you look at it right now, I mean, seriously, this is pretty good combat and combo moves, like they kind of improved on the attacks that they had in the first one, plus... It feels like they did put a lot of effort into this game. I mean, it does not feel rushed. I mean, I know what a rushed game looks like, and it's definitely not this. This game definitely had some effort and a lot of time put into it, and it definitely was not a cash grab. Like, what the hell was Watch Mojo talking about? Now, this next side mission kind of reminds me of the first Spider-Man movie, how you're going to save people from a burning building. It has that kind of jumping through a window cliche, with people literally burning, gasping for breath, while you literally just jump and try to grab the people in. The worst part about it is that there are moments where you have to get inside the burning building, and it's really hard to find them, because you have to use your spider sense. And as I've said, the spider sense works kind of like detective vision. And on average, there's usually three to five hostages. So this mission can be kind of frustrating, as I myself have actually failed this mission a couple of times. But is it good? Is it bad? Well, it, it, it's decent for one. It's not a bad side mission, but it is a good one. So I'd suggest this mission isn't bad, but I would say that it's a good challenge. I mean, it actually is very challenging, but it's not broken. Heck no, it's not broken. 
They definitely put a lot of effort into programming this fight to make it work properly and how different the NPCs are going to react or what they're going to say. So yeah, this game did get a lot of good development and work put into it. And as you're seeing right here, this is only the easier end of the stick from what you're looking at because there are points where you have to get inside of the building instead of just looking on the rooftops there. So whoever did this, they got lucky. They didn't have to go inside the building. These missions, i say, are pretty fun in the slightest, but they're not terrible. Besides, I haven't even gotten to the best one yet. Fighting thugs, stopping petty crimes like break-ins or just simple vandalism. Now the combat, I feel like, is really best at this because this just feels like classic Spider-Man just fighting simple criminals, which is something that every Spider-Man game needs, which is why Marvel's Spider-Man had it. But this game had a good version of it as well. Now, I would say that the criminal designs in this game, I think, did a pretty good job with the whole bandanas and the red hats and shirts. I feel like it kind of went for a GTA San Andreas kind of vibe. But overall, I feel like they did a pretty good job with stopping petty criminals in the game. And I really like how, after you take down all the criminals, they're all tied up in a circle like that. It, it's kind of funny, but I think it, it's just really cool. This game deserves more praise for its side missions, but that's just my opinion. Hey guys, just to let you know, part 2 will be coming out later this week. I feel like it's better that I split these two videos in half, so it would be easier for you guys to get understanding. So, see you guys in the next video.